Hello and welcome back. In the last installment, we looked at the radio, a transmitter and a receiver operating in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band on 40 channels. Now, as we discussed, three of those 40 channels are dedicated to advertising. Today, we're going to take a look at how BLE devices advertise their services. Now, one interesting thing to note is that advertising is all some BLE devices do, and that's our first stop, looking at the roles that are supported by BLE devices. Now, broadly, any given BLE device will fulfill one of four roles. Now, some BLE devices will actually be able to operate in more than one role at once, but for now, we're going to consider them in isolation. Now, first, the broadcaster role. A broadcaster has a transmitter, but it may not even have a receiver. It doesn't really need one. A broadcaster's job is just to send out advertisements and possibly include information in the advertisement to indicate its condition. You might have a BLE thermometer, for example, and it would send out periodic announcements of its identity and the ambient temperature. And how frequently it does this is up to the designer. But it doesn't expect an acknowledgement, and it makes no connection to the receiving station. A beacon may send nothing but its identity. It's the presence of the beacon that the receiver is looking for. Now, the second role is that of an observer. An observer has a receiver, but it may not have a transmitter. Its job is just to listen for advertisements and to intercept and report to its host when certain messages are heard. An observer might, for example, monitor several thermometers and sound an alarm when any one thermometer records a temperature below freezing. Now, the next role is called a central. Now, like an observer, it listens for advertisements, but unlike an observer, it can interact with any station that it hears. Once the central has connected to another station, then that station exclusively communicates with the central until the central ends the session. The station with which a central communicates is called a peripheral. A peripheral sends out advertisements like a broadcaster does. And when the central receives the advertisements, it can connect to the peripheral. And once connected, the peripheral communicates only with that particular central. For the rest of our discussion today, we're only going to be talking about peripherals and centrals. Now, here's how it works. The peripheral starts in advertising mode, sending out advertisements over and over and over, you know, kind of like broadcast television. It's just waiting to get in range of a central that needs its data. A peripheral may send advertisements as frequently as every 20 milliseconds or as infrequently as every 10 seconds, depending on the data needs and battery life requirements. It adds a few milliseconds at random for each transmission so that multiple peripherals don't get locked into a collision loop. Now, eventually, somewhere along the line, a central is going to come along that wants to get the data from the peripheral. And at that point, the peripheral sends a message to the central describing its set of services. The central selects a service and connects to it. At that point, the peripheral and the central are said to be connected. Now, notice something here. In this relationship, the central's in control. It's the master, and the peripheral is considered a slave. But in terms of the operating mode, the peripheral is a server, responding to queries and commands from the central, and the central is operating as a client. Now, the interesting thing is that a central can connect to and manage many peripherals, but any given peripheral can only be connected to one central at a time. And also, peripherals don't connect to each other. They only connect to centrals. But notice, though, that there's nothing to prevent a given device from serving in both the central role for a set of peripherals and as a peripheral role for another central. For example, you might have a sensor aggregator hub that manages a whole set of sensors that operate as peripherals. The hub accumulates the data as a central and sends it as a block to a PC. The PC then serves as the central for the aggregator hub, which is operating in the peripheral role. By this time, you're probably wondering exactly what the advertising data looks like. Well, here's a scoop. An advertising packet consists of four parts. First is the preamble, 
and it's just a pattern of alternating ones and zeros, and all it's there for is to establish timing and amplitude levels at the receiver. Next comes the access address. Well, at least that's what they call it in the Bluetooth specs, but really it's not a device address of any kind, and in advertising packets it always contains this fixed value. It's best to think of it as a flag that just lets everyone know that it's an advertising packet. Next comes the payload. Now, in Bluetooth parlance, it's called a protocol data unit. We'll talk about what's in there in just a moment. Finally, there's a 24-bit CRC, and if the CRC doesn't check, then the entire packet's discarded. So that's what's being transmitted over the air from the peripheral to any central that cares to listen. But here's the thing. This packet is actually the prototype for any packet of any type that goes across a BLE interface. Every packet that gets transmitted starts with a preamble to sync up the receiver, and it always ends with a CRC to verify that the message didn't get corrupted, and it always has an access address that gives the receiver a clue as to what the packet is and how it ought to be handled. All right, now we're ready to unpack that advertising PDU. We start with a two-byte header, and it just contains a set of flags and the payload length. Next, there's an address field. Now, once again, it may not represent any real address that you can, you know, actually use. Very frequently, this is a random value that remains consistent only for the duration of the session. And then finally, there's the advertising data, and that's included at the end. Inside the advertising data, there's a set of AD structures. AD stands for advertising data. You can have as many AD structures as you can fit into 31 bytes. Each AD structure consists of a one byte length, a one byte type, and the advertising data. Now, among other things, the advertising data provides information about services that the peripheral that's doing the advertising can provide. But what AD types are out there? Well, it turns out there are quite a few. Now, not all of these data types are directly applicable to Bluetooth low energy, but this gives you an idea of how many there are. Now, in particular, notice this one. Complete list of 16-bit service class UUIDs. Now, UUID is a universally unique identifier, and within the Bluetooth universe, every object every service, characteristic, attribute, or anything else you might think of is assigned a UUID. The service class UUID is what BLE uses to advertise particular services, and services are at the heart of BLE. But that's not all you can advertise, not by a long shot. There are dozens of AD types that let the central know the identity and the capabilities of the peripheral. But the key is that list of service class UUIDs. So, what services might be advertised? Well, the answer to that question is in another specification called GAT. GAT stands for Generic Attributes Profile, and it's the format Bluetooth Low Energy uses to specify the services that are exposed to the central. So, this is the mechanism the peripheral uses to let any central listening know whether it might want to make a connection. It exposes an AD that provides its identifier, another AD that might describe its type, and yet another AD that contains this list of service class UUIDs that describe the kind of information the peripheral is ready to share or to accept. A central then makes a connection to the peripheral, but what happens next? Once you're connected, what kind of data goes across the radio link? Well, that's the topic we'll cover in part four of this video series. See you then!